Good evening, everybody. This is Cinnamon Noir. And this is the Ramen Shaman. And welcome to a very special 4th of July episode of this, this channel, whatever it is. And for such a special American day, what could be better than the most American patriotic thing in existence, B-Ball? This is Tales of Game Studios, presents Chef Boyardee's Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Is it, are they playing, um, they are! Yes, they are! <laughs> the theme song to Space Jam. It is. This is actually a sequel, both to the movie Space Jam, and to the video game Barkley Shut Up and Jam, from the early 90s. Both of these are from the early 90s. So this was made by Tales of Game Studios, which is a very weird game studio. I love these guys. They're like a modern Marx Brothers. Um, they are actually making another game in this. They just successfully kickstarted it. Uh, it's called... Here's the full name. Just a minute. Uh, the Magical Realms of Tirna Nog Escape from Necron 7, Revenge of Kuhulin, the official game of the movie. Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden 2. Jesus. Yeah, this is actually kind of a somber game, oddly enough. Somber and silly. This is not Charles Barkley, by the way. This is just a person in their studio. All celebrity is so impressions. Or all celebrities are imp impersonated poorly. Yes. Their, their impersonation of Charles Barkley is about as good as my impersonation of James Bill Jones when I do This is CNN. So this is called the Hoops Barkley Saga. It's actually about his son. The whole series is, that is. You may notice it started off with a claim, This game is canon. Um... The whole genesis for this game, actually, the idea for it, came from around 2006 when they were reading the Wikipedia entry for Space Jam. And it said, there is some debate as to whether or not the movie is canon. <laughs> what they meant was whether it's canon to Looney Tunes, but what they thought about it was, what, they mean like canon to Michael Jordan's life? <laughs> so that inspired, that was the nugget of thought that led to this game. So this is Charles Barkley with his son, Hoops in a post-apocalyptic world where basketball was banned. The man next to him, as you just said, is his is LeBron James' Octoroon great-grandson, uh, Balthios James. Okay, then. I did not think the term Octoroon was still used these days, but apparently they like it, because they bring up the term Octoroon a lot. An Octoroon is someone who is one-eighth black. I thought it was someone who was... I thought it was... Because I've used the, heard the term quadroon mm -hmm. to, her, to refer to someone who is three quarters black, one quarter white. Okay, maybe it's seven eighths. What do I know? Either way, it's kind of not the best term to use. But, <laughs> no, you it's know. not. The last time I saw <laughs> no. it used is like an 18th century manual about slaves. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, kids, if you're listening, probably avoid it. Kids, don't watch this video. No, nope. Quadroon is one quarter African or Aboriginal ancestry. So I love this game. This is like a JRPG. Um, it, it actually has a lot in common with Final Fantasy VI. Especially the idea of a lost technology which caused destruction and loss of life. Only everything is basketball themed. And there's some weird 80s references too. Like, these guys are going off to buy chops. Which, my uh, Neo Shackles. My Neo Shackles. Yeah, Neo Shekels is the currency of this universe. If you like, I will explain some aspects of this universe uh, while we have some downtime. A cloaked Octoroon has killed two men in the Neo New York Mall on behalf of Blood Moses. Blood Moses, by the way, is an acronym. No one knows what it stands for. Mm. It's an awfully long acronym. <laughs> Balthios says he has to go. Hmm. Oh, and who's this coming up? Mr. Jordan? <laughs> With his tiny-looking head? I don't know if they intended that, but it looks very odd. 
yeah, Charles it, Barkley's sprite is much better. Is he supposed to be Michael Jordan or any, in any way related? Because holy shit, no. Actually, they have some... In the design, he looks a little bit like Michael Jackson, which I think was deliberate. So Michael Jordan came in here because he heard dribbling, and basketball was officially banned. In fact, there's a funny little subtext in this game where athletics of any kind are sort of looked down upon, and they're something you have to hide. It, it's weird. Th this game, if I had to describe it in one word, it would just be weird. <laughs> hmm. So he tells Hoops to wait here while he goes out and gets some medicine. Uh, Charles Barkley had no involvement with this game, I'm pretty sure. Let's uh, let's lear learn a little bit about Charles Barkley, shall we? Charles Barkley is 53. He's a retired professional basketball player and a currently an analyst on the television program Inside the NBA. His nicknames are Chuck, Sir Charles, and the Round Mound of Rebound. Does it say anything on Wikipedia? Oh my god, number 10 video games. No, oh, no, that just talks about Barkley Shut Up and Jam. Okay. Oh. That son of a bitch. He was the first baller to join the b-ball removal department. So Michael Jordan is sort of like your worst enemy. He, uh, <laughs> he gave up on basketball early when the government turned against it, and he decided to join them to hunt down and destroy basketball players. So he's like the Tony Stark of... Yeah, he is, actually. He's also a little bit... There's some, like, sort of, uh, the Incredibles undertones to this. Right. Na, 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 get a job. <laughs> I love that Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's what Charles Barkley says to a bum who asks him for a new job. That is mean. God. It is, but it's a catchy song. I love that song. Uh, so this is a pump. Um, pumps are what you save at in this game. However, before you can save, they give you this really long, ridiculous spiel that uh, kind of resembles forum posts. In this one, he talks about how Japanese games are more sophisticated than Western ones. And uh, don't mind that slot I just erased. It, it has no information you need to know about. That sounds suspicious. No, no, it, it really doesn't. So this is Neo New York. <laughs> mm. This woman tells us about the Chaos Dunk. It's as powerful as 150 megaton nuclear blasts. And it killed 15 million people. Charles Barkley's the only one who's ever done it. But this woman apparently doesn't recognize him, which is absurd. <laughs> I mean, he looks completely different from everyone else in this world, but whatever. Mm. He's got the most detailed sprite of anybody. Oh, by the way, the uh, typical healing item in this game is called Ecto Cooler. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, it was an 80s thing. And this guy wants to sell us some chups. <laughs> it helps with the glaucomas. I see. Yeah, I think you can tell what this is. They get to have it, and they aren't even afflicted with my crippling glaucoma. <laughs> That's a little uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force reference for all of you listeners out there. So this guy, we talked to a little bit about basketball. I've never heard the term chup used as a slang term for that. Uh, actually, neither have I. <laughs> but apparently it is. It's kind of hard to say. These guys are weird. There are so many different ideas in this game. And yeah. it incorporates influences from like almost everything. Oh, by the way, one of the most powerful healing items in this game is a chicken fry. Like, from Burger King. Mm. In fact, there is another healing item that is chicken dew, which is the dew that accumulates on a chicken fry. Mm. This is a frickin' weird game. This I, I can't say it enough. This is an extremely weird game. This is an extremely... It's also free. Um, and yet, I gotta say, weird as this game is, it's really good. It's got an interesting story. The combat system is fun. This is one of the best RPGs I've played in the last five years. I feel like it's... a lot of this is going to make up the soundtrack to our Killer7 Let's Play as well. Uh, it very well could be. <laughs> By the way, don't mind any noises you might hear from outside. People are setting off fireworks. It's because popular in my neighborhood. Your neighborhood being the continental United States of America. <laughs> I'm not getting any more specific than that. I don't want any stalkers. Just... I don't like what you said about Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, oh, man. This guy needs a chicken fry to take his mind off all this horrible pestilential fuzz. So, yeah. What we know so far. Charles Barkley accidentally killed 15 million people during a ball game. After that, basketball was outlawed, and basketball players were either killed or went into hiding. Uh, now he lives in a ruined, bombed-out shell of what I think originally was Manhattan, or something like that. Uh -huh. And he's trying to protect himself and his kid, who likes to practice basketball, from, uh, from Michael Jordan. Yeah, this is a game that actually exists, by the way. You're not having a dream right now. So we give that kid over there a neo-shekel. Charles Barkley says, go get something to eat, kid. And it's like, with one Neo Shekel, you can't get anything in this game. A freaking chicken fry costs $175. They're and like I mean, the penny. Real life, yeah, I know, exactly. Give a kid a penny. Here, kid, get yourself a cup of coffee. Oh, and here we talk to the priest of this uh, church, which is Larry Bird. <laughs> Since this game is a sequel to Space Jam... All five of the basketball players who were trapped in the magical basketball in that game are major characters. That includes Charles Barkley and Larry Bird. It's funny, he said this is a house of God, but actually the god they worship is like a new synthetic god named Clispaith. Mm. I don't know whether that's a pun or what, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Maybe one of you viewers will, and maybe you'll mm. leave a comment. Maybe also someday I'll have a flying horse that dispenses free candy. I don't even know if we have any viewers. But anyway. Uh, do do we count? I mean, we do watch our own videos. Uh, I think you count, but I don't. Yeah, okay. So, Larry Bird tells us not to do anything rash. Larry Bird is actually like close to my favorite basketball player, so I, I was glad that he got to be in this game. Charles Barkley doesn't like him, though thinks he's making a difference. That tree ain't never gonna be green again. Does Kareem Abdul-Jabbar show up in this by any chance? Uh, hmm. I don't actually remember. I think there's a reference to him. There is a reference to almost every single basketball-related thing somewhere in this game. However, not all of them are characters. Some of them are just passing references. Okay. I don't... I I don't think I even need to tell you why, why I asked or what movie I was thinking of. What do you mean? When I asked if Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in this game. <laughs> I think you have me confused with someone else, kid. My name is Roger Murdoch. I'm an airline pilot. <laughs> I think you're the best, but my dad says you don't hustle enough on defense. That scene is so great. You can just see him boiling with hatred as this kid <laughs> talks to him. It's wonderful. Oh, so steroids in this game are your standard revive item. Oh, restore Jesus. Your, your VP. Really? Uh, really. I feel like I feel like they that should be for the baseball one. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Bas basketball has had its share of scandals. I guess. Although yeah. it is weird that ba baseball has had more roiding scandals than football. Yeah. Considering that football's like the sport got the most money. Well, well, just that it that it seems like the sport where you have the most need for muscle. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing, though. In baseball, muscle leads to a clearly defined outcome, which is mm. farther shots. In football, the amount of muscle doesn't actually tell you, hmm. um, you know, how much you're going to succeed in any given run. Someone could outmaneuver you anyway. True. Okay, enough sports chat. <laughs> what is this, ESPN2? So Charles Barkley is tired. He goes to sleep. And while he's asleep, the TV mentions that Manhattan has just come in completely destroyed. In other words, there has been another chaos dunk. <laughs> but there's only one person who's ever been known to use a chaos dunk. And it's Charles Barkley. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's this is not a good place to be right now. Next to Charles Barkley, in the same room as Charles Barkley, not a good idea. <gasps> And here comes Jordan to arrest us for being a member of Blood Moses. I want it to turn out this is some kind of Manchurian candidate shit right here. Uh, and he I don't actually know. did. I actually haven't finished this game yet. That would be so awesome. It's been 12 years since he played basketball. You're a sick, sick little man, Barkley. 
I love Jordan's little uh, re- repartee with Charles Barkley. It's ridiculous. So uh, this is actually a quick time event. You have to press the correct buttons in the right order. And if you don't, Charles Barkley falls down flat on his face. If you do it too much, you die. Hmm. We don't see the game over screen in this one, which is a shame because it's actually kind of interesting, but uh, oh well. So here you uh, get these guys to shoot each other in the face while Charles Barkley continues to flee the scene. Not necessarily the smartest move in the world, but they'll probably kill him at this point. They think he killed 15 million people. Apparently it's a surprise they left him alive the first time, but whatever. I mean, these guys make the alpha sections look clever. They make him look confident, at least. Yeah. So they have Hoops. Hoops, the character this game is actually named after. Jordan says, surrender, and he won't hurt the boy. Charles Barkley actually gives up at this point. But, someone else has come to keep us from making that mistake. And he just killed three people. You know, just casually. It seems like a nice guy to hang around with, right? <laughs> That's a very strange way to spell damn it. Oh boy. So this is actually the ultimate hellbane. And in case you forgot that, since it was mentioned like once before this, it's this killer who's been going around and killing people. Hmm. They think he's associated with Blood Moses. And he just admits to it when he's, you know, confronted about it. But he has a story to tell. He says he's not a murderer. The people he killed were Blood Moses agents. Hmm. And he knows Charles Barkley's innocent and wants to help him prove it. This is actually similar to the plot of Dead Rising 2, but whatever. So he actually protected Hoops. He took Hoops away from Jordan and put him into the church with Larry Bird. Interesting. And no way you can keep a kid safer than having him be with Larry Bird. So they're kind of, uh, you know, strange bedfellows. They really couldn't get along, so they have to team up. Here they are in the B-Ball catacombs, which is where all the basketball players were buried after they were purged. <laughs> So he gives you some battler's tomes. You can use those to figure out the combat system in this game. The combat system is a little weird. Um, Rather than being a basic menu-based thing, you choose to attack or do a special attack, and then you do different attacks based on which buttons you push. Kind of like Lisa, Mm. the painful RPG, uh, and also a little bit like Paper Mario, just slightly. So yeah, it's similar to your Stick of Truth video. Here I'm having this guy do a basic attack. Barkley, meanwhile, does attacks based on basketball throwing. He can either do a pass, in which case you get to do two attacks, both fairly weak, but you can change your target in between them. Or you can do a slam dunk, which... Oh, sorry, free throw, which is a more powerful move that you can only do once. Huh. So yeah, fairly simplistic UI here, but it, it, it works. And actually, they're pretty generous with the money in this game also, and they give you some good items. So that you can... Oh, I love the breakdancing they do at the end of this. Ultimate Hellbane is just tearing up the floor. Literally, think I, since, since I think he's knocking his sword back and forth over it. Oh, here is a Zomballer. So, the Ultimate Hellbane can use Zauber attacks. Zaubers are like a special form of magic in this game. As I'm sure you may already know, Zauber just means magic in German. And I, I like that, because it kind of reminds me of the gratuitous German of some JRPGs, like the Also Sprock Zarathustra series. <laughs> Sorry, the Xeno Saga series. Also Sprock Zarathustra is just the name of one of the games. I was going to guess the sequel to Beyond Good and Evil. I know, we made that joke during the Beyond Good and Evil thing, but there are actually three Xeno Saga games, and they're all named after Nietzsche books. One actually is named Beyond Good and Evil, but just in German. Mm. Which is, um... God, what is that in German? Just a minute. I shouldn't look up Wikipedia so much in the videos, but I can't help it. Mm. When you stare into the b-ball, the b-ball stares into you. Actually, the second game of this opens up with Hoops Barkley saying it when you stare into the abyss, it stares into you. So it's kind of funny. That oh, wow. It happens to exist in this game. Ah, jenseits von Gut und Böse. Vorspiel einer Philosophie der Zukunft. That's Beyond Good and Evil in German, the full title. And one thing this game definitely shares in common with Nietzsche books is they have frickin' long original titles. 
the full title of this one, as I'm sure you saw, was uh, Tales of Games Presents Chef Boyardee's Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Mm-hmm. Part one of the Hoops Barkley Saga. Bye. That's about five times as many words as you have in the average video game title these days. By much Dr. More. Samuel D. Celine Dion Tran. <laughs> Dr. Samuel D. Celine Dion Tran. You know, if there was one other thing I would describe these days as just being completely weird and full of random references, it would definitely be Dr. Tran. Although the term these days would be a little bit generous. Yeah. It's been a while. So these ball brains, they can take off their basketball heads and throw them at you, and if they do, um, they lose some attack power, but the attack they use with their head is fairly strong. You may have noticed right now Barkley is actually dribbling a soccer ball. That is because basketballs have been banned. So his basic weapon is not even a real basketball. How embarrassing. Traitor. No, I mean, he did what he had to do. Mm. This is uh, the ultimate Hellbane's second attack, which summons a Japanese kanji that you can assemble by doing special time moves. Uh, I gotta say, the ultimate Hellbane is not a very good attacker compared with uh, Barkley here. The free throw's not too good, but the pass is a much better attack. Just completely wrecks the cram. What is that other guy doing? He's breakdancing, I think. Their victory chances are so weird. So this tomb belonged to Magic Johnson. I believe the phrase that used in Chime would be rock the house. And then I love Charles Barkley here. He says, I can see you're no greenhorn when it comes to vintage 21st century colloquialisms. And then the ultimate helping goes, I'll take that as a compliment. Is rock the house really 20th, 21st century? Ah, well, it was used in the 21st century. I guess. It's weird because they're still in the 21st century. Maybe he says 20th century. Times in this game are a little bit confused, much like you know, the entire canon and story of the game. Because yeah. um, it's only 2053, but LeBron James has already had a great grandson. It's like, how is this even freaking possible? If that's like a sly reverence to people having kids before they should, then, you know. But not only does he have a great grandson, his great grandson is an adult. That should take like a hundred years. Yeah. There's no point trying to make sense in this game, because it really is kind of just like a, a crack dream. That is the weird part about... I, I, that actually reminds me of Fallout 2, where... Your... Where the protagonist of Fallout 1 is referred to as like an ancestor of a certain great tribe, despite the, despite the fact that the games are only 80 years apart. Right. So this is a statue of Teresa, the goddess of slams and jams. You gotta slam, do the space jam. So this is a reproduction of the basketball that Charles Barkley and company were contained in when they fought against the Monstars. Just in case you forgot, this is actually a sequel to the movie Space Jam. Okay. Yep. When I first started this game, actually, I didn't even realize there was an, uh, an equipment system. Because I thought maybe it was a shorter game than it actually is. This is a really long game for a freeware game. Hmm. Um, it's definitely worth your time. It's fun to play. It's got some great jokes in it, although they're all really weird. I don't know. I, I guess for the rest of it, I just ought to let the game speak for itself. So these are all sarcophagi in which were interred the great b-ball players of antiquity. By the way, when you press the X button, you can use those little Nike shoes to zoom along the ground, which is very helpful in getting away from enemies and just covering ground more quickly. This game, you don't actually need to grind a lot, but there are a lot of enemies in each little dungeon, so sometimes it pays to try to get away from them. They can really do a number on your characters. The, uh, if you notice the two bars in the bottom right, the blue and the red one, the red one is your health and the blue one is your magic power. The ultimate Hellbane can use his magic to perform Zaubers, and Charles Barkley can do it to perform special basketball moves, such as showboating and, you know, various other stuff. This was annoying. Sometimes your shots just miss. I forget if there is actually an accuracy stat in this game, but uh, it can be very annoying. Combining accuracy stats with Paper Mario-style gameplay is not a good idea. Really? I actually kind of like it. 
Well, I mean, what, with, with the whole, like, quick time event when you attack thing. I can tell you the quick time events sometimes are very annoying. And I would like to have moves that do, a, like, a consistent amount of damage. But oh well. Larry Johnson? No, not Larry. He was such a mamma jamma. So every time you examine one of these sarcophagi, you get a b-ball tier, which is a very useful healing item. It's a nice thing that they can do for uh, first-time players. Hmm. Fun fact, though, the first time I played this game, I completely skipped this whole section, which is possible, which put me in a very bad position for fighting the first boss. Oh. That's not good. Unstable footing. So you'll notice all these stream monsters. Uh... These are the, the way the monsters appear on the main screen. This is a new Zauber I just got, by the way, the water Zauber. You can use it to give enemies special status effects, like I just gave these guys diabetes. Mm. Another one is Glaucoma. When it said that Chups help with the Glaucomas, they weren't actually kidding. Glaucoma is a status effect in this game, and you can fix <laughs> it with weed. Um, anywho... Uh, these sprites work a lot like they do in Earthbound, again. Uh, you run into them to start a battle. If you run into them from behind, you get a bonus move, because you surprise them. If they run into you from behind, they get a bonus move. But if the screen just turns white, then it just starts a normal battle. That's if you, like, hit them on the side or anything like that. Or if you're facing them while they run into you. So yeah, you can already see, the ultimate Hellbane is not really doing much damage here. Barkley is pretty much keeping the whole team going. So do you have any questions so far about this game? And its utter not freakiness? Really, I'm just kind of fascinated. I know, isn't it? There's something hypnotizing about this game. The level design, it's kind of odd. I mean, I like the the design of the different areas, but in terms of layout, they are kind of samey, and not very creative. But that's fine, because the creativity in this game clearly came from, you know, the, the writing. I love how there's a cutscene here, which froze all the characters, so the sprite is still trying to follow me, even though it can't move. So it's like the whole time they're making all this philosophical dialogue, this enemy is just off-screen waving at me. Maybe Charles Barkley is really despondent here. He thinks maybe fate chose him to destroy basketball. Because it's his <laughs> fault the Chaos Dunk happened. The game's a little um, light on saying how the Chaos Dunk actually happened. It just implies that Charles Barkley got carried away. <laughs> and he was playing b-ball so well that the Chaos Dunk just happened. And people, because he's the only one who's ever done it, people think Charles Barkley's the only one who can perform a chaos dunk, but you will later find out that there are ways other people can do it, and it was in fact someone else. Right now I'm showing how you run away. You have to get both characters to run from battle, and then every time the enemy has a turn, there's a 33% chance you'll manage to escape. I hmm. nearly don't get out of here, but luckily that happens. These statues are very helpful. They restore all of your health, and you, you need that sometimes in this game, because actually... While they're fairly generous with the money, you really don't have enough to have a big supply of healing items and good equipment at the same time. So it makes sense mm. to give yourself good equipment and then be kind of stingy with the healing items. And just try to play well so you don't have to use them. Oh my gosh, the ultimate hellbane says there's a ref trying to force its way into this dimension. The dread ref. Her, her, her. So I now I'm using the Ice Zauber power. This just does a lot of damage. That's pretty much his only benefit. But you'll notice it does do a hell of a lot of damage. I think this is supposed to be kind of a tricky fight, but it doesn't really... Not that much happens here. Ultimate Helping gets a bit beaten up, though. And we'll fix that with some free throws. Bam. Every time you level up in this game, you get a new power, either a Zauber or a new basketball thing for Barkley, which is nice. I definitely recommend healing before this next part, because you get an even harder fight than the last one. I guess the last one didn't look that hard. But like I said, I actually skipped this entire section 
in the first time I played this. So the level design is kind of open. You can do what you want. Oh my gosh, and here's the tomb of Kobe Bryant. Who is actually not completely dead. Also, he looks freaking ridiculous. Yeah. He looks like a Popeye character. Wait, what the fuck was that? That's the Flame Zauber. He waves his sword around like a spaz, and it lowers the power of opponents. can be very useful in boss battles. I don't know what these guys have against Kobe Bryant when they seem to really like all the other basketball players, but, you know, whatever. I mean, there were some, uh, scandals involving him. Were there? Tell yeah. me about these scandals. Later. Okay. I just killed Kobe Bryant. Even in death, he had that baller look. A professional to the end. So let me ask, Greg, do you ever watch basketball? Not really, no. Do you have a favorite basketball player? Not really, no. Have you ever in your life thought about basketball? Occasionally. Oh, okay. Good enough. You can play this game. That's all you need. You just need to have the spirit of basketball somewhere in you. The heart of the ball. Yeah, I don't want to put up with this crap, so I'm escaping. And luckily they miss with their basketball shot. The reason I'm going back here is to do a little puzzle that I found about in the first part of this game. And here it is. It's an intriguing contraption. Oh, and look what it does. Turning this b-ball seems to shift these tiles. It's an ancient Sumerian children's toy. So, yeah, this is pretty obvious. It's just a block-moving puzzle. Oddly enough, the first time I did this, I managed to do it really quickly. The second time, I had a bit of trouble. I'm not good at memorizing these kinds of things. It is possible there were two different layouts, though. I didn't actually memorize it. Since if I had, that would be pretty sad. Are there any athletes at all that you particularly like? Like professional athletes? Not that much. Really? Hmm. There was... I actually... Did you know... You know the uh, Backyard Sports games, right? Yeah, Backyard Baseball. I played that as a kid. Yeah, y you know they... Some of the later ones, they actually had, like... Baby versions of the other guys? Of the real... Of real yeah. players? Like little Mark McGuire. Yeah, it was really awkward, uh... Because I... I did, little so Barry I, Bonds, and they're like, Little Barry Bonds, why is your voice so deep? To, like, don't like, even think about it. Well, to cut your teeth on that, and then all your favorite players. Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, mm. Sammy Sosa, just all having cheating scandals. <laughs> it's or kind of funny, like, really. roiding scandals. It's like... Well, my favorite game is tennis. And one of the things I like about tennis is that there haven't been any of these doping scandals or anything like this. And, and the, the best part is they actually depicted... Mark McGuire is this giant ass kid, even in game. <laughs> like muscly. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, that's like hilarious. really big. It's like, oh, that's why. Rare unlockable, roided Mark McGuire. <laughs> anyway, avoid the roid, kids. It's not worth it. This is a public service announcement. A very clumsily created one. No, but I would love a game where you played as tennis players. And, like, I don't know, you play as Bjorn Borg, and the bad guy is John McEnroe. I would play the hell out of that game. But sadly, no one has made it. They've just made this. The fact is, tennis games on consoles have never been that popular, whereas basketball games have been pretty big. Barkley Shut Up and Jam was actually a reasonably popular game. Although, funnily enough, the person who made this never played Barkley Shut Up and Jam. He just knew about it. And he thought it was a funny concept. He says the title just sprang into his mind when he read that line from Wikipedia. Hmm. And, no, they decided to credit it at the beginning. You may have noticed it said, this game is canon. Hmm. Like, all of it is just canon. To real life. Hmm. Canon is such a crapshoot, you know? Mm. I mean, it's funny. These days, franchises are much more popular than one-shot stuff. Which means canon has become more important than ever, and yet people, I think, have gotten worse at doing it. 
at properly, you know, setting things up so they're consistent. Hmm. I can't imagine what Harry Potter's gonna be like in ten years. Oh, and for those of you who are saying, wait, Harry Potter is over, no it's not. They're selling the script to the play they're making, making out of it. I cannot think of a more transparent, money-changing thing. Hmm. Not only that, they're splitting up the script into two books. It's like books are taking inspiration from movies now. All the worst parts of movies. So this is the tomb he's taken him to of the ultimate basketball player. I'm sure we all know who that is. Direct from Cleveland, with us tonight. Not live with us, he's dead. No, this LeBron is LeBron James. James. And wait a minute, if it's his grandfather, then that means the ultimate hellbane is... Baltheos James. <gasps> I'm Baltheos James, bitch. So Baltheos is Barkley's best friend, but he couldn't reveal himself until Barkley knew the truth. Okay, so LeBron then. James is a ghost from beyond time and space. He's like what Obi-Wan Kenobi was in the remade version of, you know, episode six of Star Wars. But anyway, he's come back <laughs> to give Barkley some advice. You remember the Space Jam, don't you, Barkley? This game, there's so many great lines that you could quote out of context and they would make no sense at all. So yes, the Blood Moses has been using a magical b-ball to absorb basketball powers so that they can use a chaos dunk. <gasps> we must stop them. Those monsters. Those monsters. <laughs> anyway, he tells us to look for the Cyber Dwarf. And yes, the Cyber Dwarf is actually someone you have to find. Uh, uh oh. Unfortunately, our efforts have spawned a B ball monster who's just all balls all the time. I don't know why I did this. It should have been obvious to me that status effects wouldn't work in a boss. They never do. So here I use some Barkley special moves. This is Showboat Jam, where you get a bonus to a special stat and also manage to do extra damage, which is a nice move. When the boss goes up in the air like that, you can't attack him, so the best thing to do is just counter. This is sort of a wake-up boss, I would say, much like many first bosses in RPGs. It's designed to make sure that you know that how the mechanics work and you're not just winging it, so that once you do, you can go farther into the game, because even as um, quickly as, say, half an hour after this boss, there is another boss that is much tougher. Interesting. So it's important that you know how to do this. This boss also introduces you to the fact that bosses can do multiple hitting attacks, like over and over again, which is also important for a later boss fight. I'm not going to spoil it, because it is actually one of the best boss fights I've played in recent memory. So I want you at home to experience it. So here I'm just using the Fire Zalber to reduce his power, which can be very helpful, because this guy hits pretty hard. Once I do, though, he hits like an absolute chump once I nerf him. Hmm. Although he does have an ability to increase his power again, which, you know, it's not nice after all I've done. See, there we go. He just raised his power by 10. Not only negating the power down I did on him, but also increasing it past that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you miss that little window on the, uh, the pass thing, it gives it a much stronger chance of missing. But I don't think it's certain to miss if you do that, because I have had it hit before. Interesting. It's just a little hard to time. It's a very fast move. Much faster than the free throw. So here I'm trying to uh, outpace his power up by powering him down again. And it actually works. He only does like two damage with each hit to Barkley. So I've pretty much got this in the bag. Or in the basket, if you will. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the least inspired enemies in the whole game. It is literally just a golem made out of basketballs. It'd be weird for me to say I'm disappointed with a freeware game that's absolutely ridiculous, but uh, compared to the rest of this game, this is slightly uh, below par. Yeah. For free games in general, this is way above par. <laughs> Believe me, I played some crappy free games. The things I do for this show, Greg. Mm. Yep, there I miss again. At least there I got something. 
This is a very weird move where he just throws his arms like a pair of boomerangs. Although they look, they look more like croissants to me. And finally... No, cheat. He has just a tiny sliver of health left. Ridiculous. Come on, let's finish this. Beat him in the head, Barkley. God. Barkley are worthless. Hmm. So Balthios manages to finish him off. So every time you go up a level, it says, Balthios aspired to level 3. That kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, me too, Balthios. It was pretty close <laughs> there. Yeah, you could be better. You need better equipment. A basketball. It's LeBron James's special basketball. Mm. And yet it's only the second best weapon in... Sorry, it's it's only the second worst weapon in the entire game. How upsetting. I'd like it if it was like Castlevania and like you had to unlock the true potential of LeBron James's basketball. But no, it's <laughs> not the way it works. It's not even called something special. It's just B-ball. The B-ball. It's like, after all that cutscene, this weapon is this prosaic. You also get a nice little upgrade for Balthios here, an Ice Zauber. Much better than the Fire Zauber he started off with. And we are going to add one more person to our little merry band here, right before the end of the video. What? Some kind of robot. Let's leave this hunk of scrap metal. Wait a minute, it can talk. It's a cyborg. It has <laughs> Vince Carter's number on it. You remember Vince Carter from the... Uh, Emanita Design Nike commercial we saw the other day? Sure. Once I knew this guy was in the game, I knew this was where I had to end the video. With <laughs> the Vince Borg 1500. Paul Theos was a child when Vince Borg, or Vince Carter, balled for the Nets. So we're helping him regain his memory. He was one of the few who wasn't killed. Instead, he was just reconstructed as a cyborg. Uh. Who brought you back to life, Vince? So, this has been Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. I highly recommend any of you who have even the slightest interest in this game to go play it. Uh, and also, <laughs> check out the second one. They're making it currently. They already had a successful Kickstarter for it. It made like four times what they wanted. And uh, it looks like it's going to be pretty freaking cool. But finish this first, because this is not the kind of game where the second one like makes up for the first one not being known. You have to know the first game for the second to make sense. All right, then. Anyway, after that little data dump, <laughs> we're ready to call it a night. Good night, I love everybody. The sprites. Oh, the Good sprites. Night. Or the, the, the pictures, I was thinking of. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. The character portraits. They're pretty crazy. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.